our text scripture, Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Romans 11, verse 29. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For God's gift and His call are without repentance. And I love it from the amplified rendition which says, For God's gifts and His call are irrevocable. He never withdraws them when once they are given, and He does not change His mind about those to whom He gives His grace or to whom He sends its call. And yesterday we saw that that same gift and grace of God can be transferred to someone else and then you become useless. Today we are taking a step further. We are looking at the irrevocable callings of God. For so long in the body of Christ, um, except for now that you are learning the truth, many, many people are illusioned to think that only the people in the five-fold ministry are called. But in Jesus' global ecclesia, according to the assignment God has given to me, it is so clear that every human being is called by God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And um, in Christ Jesus, we are all purposed by God, given specific destiny as a dimension of God's word. Each and every one of us is a dimension of God's word to fulfill exclusively the purpose of God for our lives. All right? And it is clear now that you do you may not be called into the fivefold, but you are either called into any of the five major areas God has mandated us to help each and every son of his that he brings our way to fulfill the destiny to which he has ordained them. And that destiny includes you God has called everyone to either you are called into gospel direct ministry in the frontline ministry as a pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist, or apostle, or the associated ministry gifts, and every other call are also ministry. They are called the work of the ministry, and that call includes business, innovation, and entrepreneurship excellence. God has called people into political and public administrative excellence. God has also called people into professional and career excellence, and every woman in God is called as custodians of destiny to help their husband to whom she will be given and their children to fulfill God's purpose for their lives while fulfilling their own purpose in fulfilling in helping those two parties to fulfill God's purpose for their life are you with me hallelujah the fivefold ministry Amen. is a very great and noble call according to hebrews chapter 5 verse 4 from amplified version says beside one does not appropriate for himself the honor of being priest but he is called by god and receive it of him just as aaron did king james version says no man taketh this honor to himself except he that is called by god fivefold ministry is a most noble call and you cannot wake up one morning and say, I want to be a pastor. It's not a career. Destiny call is not a career. If you are called into professional and career excellence ministry, it is still not a career. If you are called as a business person, it's not a career. It is a destiny. It is a ministry. It is the purpose for your existence. Do you understand? So these... Yes, sir. These five areas I've always emphasized and will continue to emphasize to you. And, and I, today I wish to try to give you examples of those in the Bible to whom we have examples of people that are called. Whatever calling God gives to whosoever, He also is the same God that empowers us to fulfill that call. The Bible says, faithful is he that calls you, who also will do it. And this is very significant in today's teaching. I want you to understand this from the word go. Because God is the caller, the chooser, the predestinator, he is the same one that is going to fulfill that destiny through you. And he has put mechanism in place that you will never be without needing him. So all these great call that I've specified to you about, you need God to help you fulfill them and he has put mechanism in place that without him you will never be able to fulfill your call. I just quoted 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 24 to you and I'm going to say that again whatever calling God gives to whosoever he also is the one that effects and accomplishes it through the chosen vessel 
for the specific assignment that he has called you to do. And what am I saying? You will never be able to fulfill destiny without the grace of God. All of these things you call talent, you call gift, you call anointing, you need God to help you to be able to fulfill this destiny. Philippians chapter 2 verse 19 says, For it is God which worketh in you. I love this scripture. Can you say with me, it is God that works in us. It is God that works in us. So God wants to work through you. It is God that works in you. The willingness to fulfill destiny and the capacity to fulfill it, it is all God. All he needs from you is your availability. And this is where it becomes strange and unbelievable. This is where it becomes technical. You wanting to be what God is not ready to use you for. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. He has created you for his pleasure. And the pleasure he created you for is defined by the call that he has given you. And may I say here that the giftings of God in your life is a revelation of the call. It can help you define your call. The gifts of God are the tools by which you are going to fulfill that call. And it is God that chose that gift for you. And he is the one that will activate that gift. He is the same one that will utilize the gift to glorify himself. All right, but the same spirit, give it, give it unto every man separately as, as his will. So there are administration of the spirit, there are, there are operations of the gift of God, and there are manifestation of the gift of God. Those are three dimensions. I spoke with administration of the gift, which is the gift of the Son, manifestation of the gift, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit, the operations of the gift, which of the, the gift of the Father. I've explained this to you before, but it's in the Bible says the same spirit. All right. In John chapter number, John chapter 15, verse 4 to 6. John 15, verse 4 to 6. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Without, for without me, you can do nothing. For without me, you can do nothing. I, I'm trying to paint the right picture for you here. That you have this great destiny, but you can never fulfill it without the giver of the destiny. So you are united with him and he has put mechanism in place that you must continue to be united with him before your destiny can ever move forward. The day you ever thought or think that you will not need God any second in the pursuit of your destiny is the day you begin to fail. Like I was sharing with the women this morning, uh, this afternoon, in the Gracious Women platform, that look, the capacity of God is on your inside, but you must look to Him to help you to achieve the destiny that He has given to you in helping your children and the man He has given you or to give you to fulfill His destiny. Never look down on yourself or look up to God. Women say amen. Let nobody make you feel unqualified because it is grace that qualifies you. And for God to trust you with those children or that child or this man, it means God believes in you. But he, he wants you to look up to him because with your strength, you can't. But with him, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. John 1, 16 says, Of the fullness of the grace of Jesus Christ, upon which he decided the one he wants to manifest through you, we receive the grace of God upon your life is part of the un of the total grace that Jesus carried. All the grace of God was upon Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 1, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the Bible says God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Every work of God on earth is manifested through grace. And the distributor of grace is the executor of the mind of God, which is the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the one that gives grace, which is otherwise can be interpreted as unction or strength of God, or the glory of God, or the power of God. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. 
So all I'm saying to you today is that it is not enough for you to identify the call, identify the gifts of God upon your life. It is enough for you to recognize that even after the identification, you need to acknowledge that without God, it is impossible. That is why whatever you get done in the pursuit of your destiny, God takes all the glory. He doesn't want you to think it was by might nor power. He wants everything to be by the Spirit. And mark you, me right now, whatever God wants you to do, you can never do it without Him. God wants to stay pure. You can't be pure without Him. God wants you to excel. You can't excel without Him. You need the Spirit of excellence. Should it surprise you? Everything the devil does against you, there's a demon that does it. Why do you think you will get anything done for God without an angel? Without the grace of God. Karama in the Vasukata. May God open your eyes to this reality. That everything God wants you to do, everything God wants you to carry out, every demand of God, there is a grace to make it happen. Do you understand, child of God? If you understand, say, I do. I do. Grace. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. La quori ende I like to show you a scripture. Second Corinthians chapter number nine, verse eight. Powerful scripture. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight. Powerful scripture. Whatever version of the Bible you are using, please go to Second Corinthians chapter nine, from verse eight. La cose atayala basukte. Oh, glory to God. Look at verse 7. Every man according as he proposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, but for God loves a cheerful giver. But I love verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. I'm coming to teach on a full scale series of what I call the school of grace, where we will be able to understand grace in its full scale. If there is a throne of grace, we must go every day, every hour, every second. Then we need to understand everything God makes available about grace. And as the Lord has taught me, I will come and download to you. So here he says, God is able to make all the grace that you need to fulfill destiny abound towards you. That tells you. The Bible says as we move from faith to faith, we grow from grace to grace. And he said, grace be multiplied unto you. The grace you had yesterday should multiply today. You cannot depend on the grace of yesterday for the work of today. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Be being filled with the Holy Ghost, be, be understanding what the will of the Lord is. You need to understand what the will of God is. Once you understand what the will of the Lord is, the capacity to do that will is the grace of God that will be released unto you. When the apostles were threatened not to preach in the name of Jesus again, they went to seek grace. They prayed that Lord stretch forth your hand that by the, through the name of Jesus, mighty miracles will be done and grant us boldness to preach your word. The Bible said the place where they were sick, where they were shook and greater grace was upon them. Greater grace, receive greater grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody, grace, grace upon grace is coming unto you. Greater grace, receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Grace is the replacement of your inability. Grace is the replacement of your inability to please God. God says, please me. But he says, you need my grace to please me. Isn't that beautiful? The Father sent you an assignment. At the same time, he said, I will do it through you. The Bible said they went everywhere preaching. And the Lord was working with them. Oh, confirming the word. It's not about you. It's about him. And when you recognize his partnership throughout, you are the one guaranteed for success. And I can, I can assure you, everyone that he has brought to me, to raise to himself, they shall fulfill destiny. I already see you fulfilling destiny. I know and I'm assuring you, even if you doubt yourself, believe because I said it. If the devil comes to you tonight, tell the devil, my pastor, believe in me, that settles it. I've told you before, as long as I live under his grace, with this grace of God upon my life, the devil.
Life shall be subdued in your life and you shall become the best version of yourself. I am a living proof under God that you will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. How do I know? He sent me. And because he sent me, he gave me graces to fulfill what he sent me to do. No man go to battle at his own charge. As long as you seek, as you keep seeing and hearing Apostle David Longe, as long as you are part and parcel of this ministry, it is a guarantee you will fulfill destiny. Because that is what he sent me to do. The devil is under your feet. The devil is under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. What does that mean? If you have capacity for 100 dominion today, when grace is multiplied, you can have capacity for a million. That's why it says, you want wealth? There is a grace that brings wealth. It is called power to get wealth. Listen, child of God, I'm making a sound statement here today. Everything the devil does against you, he uses a demon. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. So what do you think you need against those demons? Might and power? No. You need the might of God. You need the power of God. You need the grace of God. There is one thing the devil cannot resist. It's called the grace of God. Rejoice because the angels of God are ministering spirit to the ear of salvation, which you have. The Bible talks about the grace that brings salvation. Woo! If there is a grace that brings salvation, there's a grace that brings a good husband. Yeah. Sister, you are not talking to me. Hallelujah. There's a grace that brings excellent children. There's a grace that brings great contracts. Businessmen, you are not talking to me. There's a grace. What you need is grace. That's why I say, come boldly to the throne of grace that ye may obtain mercy and find grace. All you want is grace. All your target is grace. If you are able to find the grace, you found the answer. If you are able to find the grace, you find the answer. If you are able to find the grace, you find the testimony. Every need of your life, every need of your destiny is waiting for you to descend with the grace of God. And tonight, you are descending with grace. You are descending to glorify God. Oh, that we make the knowledge of the glory of God covers the earth as the water covers the sea is the grace of God. And God is lavishing grace. God is able to make all grace, all grace, not just some grace, all the grace, the grace of excellent motherhood, the grace of excellent wife, the grace of excellent woman, excellent businesswoman, excellent businessman, excellent minister, Whatever grace you need, excellent health, whatever grace you need is available. And God says, I am lavishing the grace. Come to the throne of grace. Find the grace you need. It's already there. All oh, grace can be made abundant towards you. So it means if you are making $100,000 this year, you can grow in grace. That's what the Bible says grow in grace you can grow when grace is multiplied you begin to make one million dollar per month is somebody in need of grace i am at the temple of god right now receiving grace receive that grace for wealth receive that grace for prosperity receive that grace for healing receive a grace for promotion receive a grace for breakthrough all the grace you need right now are being released to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Internal sickness and diseases, grace is destroying them in the name of Jesus. Grace upon grace. Grace. I'd like to show you something powerful. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. What will, what will, what will grace deliver? That ye always, <laughs> not sometimes, always, having whole sufficiency. Always having, when there is a grace, there is a sufficiency. Who, who caught that? Who caught that? What is not enough is because the grace is not enough. Grace will deliver to you commensurate to the capacity of the grace. What is not enough is because the grace is not enough. And if it is the grace of God, it is more than enough. My grace is sufficient for you. But grace are a measure. Hallelujah. 
grace are in measure. Different kind of grace are measured into our life. You can be an excellent father and be a poor one. It means you have the grace of fatherhood, but you lack the grace for prosperity. <laughs> That's why it says, All oh, grace can abound to us. I am your pastor, custodians of the grace of God upon your life. Believe this prophet and you shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, I enter into the throne room of God. I enter into the storehouse of heaven. I begin to open your storehouse and deliver it to you. All the grace that are outstanding in your life, receive them like rain in the name of Jesus. You don't get it, do you, child of God? Something is happening here tonight. Heaven is open over you. Grace is falling like rain. Grace is falling like rain. All the grace that are outstanding in your year, in your life, the grace you had to manifest 20 years ago, all the suspended grace upon your life, release right now in the name of Jesus. There's a rain of grace taking place. Everything that has been stagnant and now moving forward by the grace of God. Apostle Paul said, I am what I am by the grace. You can only be what grace can make you. Whatever you have today is the capacity of grace that you have received. It's something happening to you. Showering in grace. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing, sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy's drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Tell everybody you are under the reign of grace. God is falling the reign of grace upon Jesus' global ecclesia. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing. Almighty oh, Father, every grace to fulfill destiny, receive right now in the name of Jesus. Every grace to move to the next level of your life, of your family, of your finances, receive in the name of Jesus. Grace for supernatural healing, receive. Grace is released in the name of Jesus. What are you doing at the throne of grace when you don't find grace? I am here by God. I am collecting all the grace for you. I am releasing those grace for you. Receive grace to open your mouth. Receive grace for breakthrough. Receive grace for elevation. Receive grace to build your own home. Receive grace to buy your own car. Receive grace for all the needs of your life. They are being made now. Listen. That ye always, if it is not always, Grace is absent. Always having all sufficiency. Grace will give you all sufficiency. <laughs> when you go to the throne of grace, when you ascend where you have been told, you must come back with all sufficiency. You can't go to the throne of grace and lack. He says that you may find grace to help in the time of need. Grace is the replacement of what is not sufficient or what is lacking. Oh, okay. Whether you are here or not, this grace will follow you to your house. Amen. You Amen. carry my hand up. You are, you are blessed by force. It does not matter how many demons have ganged themselves against you. When it comes to Jesus' global ecclesia, they will leave you alone by themselves because grace will distinguish you. <laughs> This dispensation is called the dispensation of grace. Zakata Braniaba. La Kosikata. Le Kosupra in the man. Hallelujah to Jesus. When grace sees faith, grace becomes excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. That he may always have sufficiency in all things. All things. All things. And may abound unto every good works. You see, you cannot do without grace. Grace will bring you into all sufficiency and abundance in glorifying God. He has called us to show forth the praises of He with good works. Hallelujah. And it is by grace. How God graced Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. It was grace. 
And Paul said, the grace of God that was with me was not in vain. That's why we are mandated, frustrate, do not frustrate the grace of God. Do not quench the spirit. Do not receive the grace of God in vain. Some of you have got grace you are not using. Do not receive it in vain. Grace is given to glorify God. All right, glory to God. Come and say, I hear. Thank you, Jesus. All right, thank you, Holy Ghost, for that power. Thank you for power move, Holy Ghost. Karamazi Ketebush. Listen, I, I am saying something. You are, being, you are being pushed to the next level. I see angels behind you carrying you to your next level. Grace is working for you. You have dwelt too long on this mountain. It's time to go forward. I see God moving you forward. I see angel pushing you forward. You are, you are going forward by force. You are going forward by grace. You are going forward by power. You are going forward. No devil can stop grace. Receive grace upon grace in the name of Jesus. What we call disgrace is lack of grace. Disgrace means lack of grace. Wherever you are being embarrassed is because grace is not there. Wherever grace is, God's glory is there. Grace is what God gives to you to get the glory. That's why you need to testify of what he does. And that's why I say he giveth more grace to the lowly. He giveth more grace to the humble. Let me show you what it means to be humble. To be humble means to acknowledge that it was not by your strength. And to be humble means to give God glory for what he has given you grace to do. And therefore, whatever you accomplish in your pursuit of destiny, never take the glory. He share his glory with nobody because the currency of his glory is called grace. Never ever hide testimony because the testimony is the product of grace. And God give more, glory, more grace to the humble. To be humble is not, yes, bless, good money, sir. That's not humility. Humility is acknowledging the grace of God and giving him glory for the grace. Humility is acknowledging that it was the grace of God that made it happen. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our hearts. That is what humility is. Humility is testifying that this is the Lord's doing and glorify him for it. And those are the people God will give more grace. The grace of God is the only thing that is sufficient. Without grace, it will never be sufficient. Zakuriya mani masakata. Do you have a need? All you need is grace. I say, find the grace. I say, find the grace. The grace is always there. But you must fulfill the protocol that I've told you, protocol of, protocol of ascension and protocol in the court of heaven. Grace is always there. It is called the throne of grace. Shouldn't that give you a picture that it is a throne dedicated to grace? And you know I showed you that those graces come from his temple. Those angels are the executor of his word. They are the manifestation of his grace. So a typical example of someone who has a business anointing, business grace, business unction, backed by God, is Joseph, who traded with the unction of business excellence to be enthroned by the gift of business excellence. Joseph was not a graduate of Harvard University or Stanford but he was able to sustain the world by the anointing of God. When you, no, let me make a statement that maybe only a few of you understood, but today, make it your slogan. You can never compete with the grace of God. <laughs> ah, God takes pleasure in humiliating grace competitors. If you are operating by grace, don't bother yourself about competitors. They can't match. You didn't understand. <laughs> No, 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 Do you understand, child of God? Who said to you, over my dead body, will you be the leader here? You will die and you will be the leader. Mm. Who said and it come to pass? When the Lord commanded it not, who can stand against the Lord? No one can. Nobody can compete with grace. <laughs> I am what I am by the grace of God. You can't compete with me. I am operating by grace. If you want to operate in my dimension, go get the grace. You can't compete with the grace of God. Say with me, nobody compete with grace. Nobody compete with grace. Grace will humiliate you. Grace, grace will frustrate you. So when you see people trying to compete with you, begin to dance. Opportunity for God to be glorified. Grace loves competition because grace loves disgracing the devil. No one compete with grace. So if you are operating by grace, raise your shoulder high, walk tall, because you are the leader. Nobody compete with grace. And you can never suppress grace. 
You can never imprison grace. You can never pull down grace. Jacozi le hende buraki hata basa kodia. Say with me, I am full of grace. I am full of grace. Whatever grace will not do, let it stay. If grace is not going to do it, then it becomes might. It becomes power. He said, it is not by might, neither is it by power. It's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. The next phase I'm going is on the mercy. Then you will see the process and the protocol to getting grace. Hallelujah. You know the story of Joseph in Genesis 39 verse 1 to 4. Because of the grace of God, he prospered Potiphar. Because of the grace of God inside prison, he became a leader. You can't compete with grace. Grace will always make you the leader. That is why it becomes worrisome when you see God's children crying. When you see God's children being humiliated by sons of the devil. Whoa! This is where I get mad. Because you don't know who you are. The Bible says it is an abomination for the righteous to bow at the feet of the wicked. Abomination. Zekusa <laughs> Barabahida. We are is the grace of God. Then it's a disgrace because you don't have a grace. When you understand the son of who you are, the commander in chief of the universe, the owner of all things, then you know the abundance of grace is made available. When you call for grace, you are calling for angels because they are the executor of the grace of God. Jesus looked at Pilate and said, shut up. I can call for 12 legions of grace and they will come now. Now, 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 now. Why you are seated in that board meeting? Why you are seated in that decision making meeting? Why you are seated at the interview? Before you go, you know you got the job. Say, I'm, I'm going in there by the grace of God. <laughs> I'm going in there with the grace of God. While you are waiting, you are busy speaking in tongues, collecting grace. Father, I receive grace. I receive grace to win that business contract. I receive grace. I receive grace in the name of Jesus. As I speak to Sister Helen, I receive grace. The Bible says Peter has received grace to lead Sister about. Lord, you show me she's my wife. I receive grace for Helen to say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. By the same grace, Joseph was able to feed the world for seven years. Zakoti <laughs> Bariala. When he appeared before Pharaoh, Pharaoh became useless because of grace. Grace doesn't bow. Grace leads. You shall be the head only. You can't suppress grace. It will always find its way to the top. And we are on this mission for you to know that the destiny God has given to you, he will fulfill it through you by his grace. So you need to understand the protocols of grace. Shout hallelujah. Are you still here? Let me give you an example of a man who excelled in political and and public administration in Daniel. You know the story of Daniel in, the, in Babylon. Yes. You find the story of Daniel in the book of Daniel chapter 5 from verse 10 to 16. You read this yourself. You will see how grace was exalting Daniel. Grace distinguished Daniel. Grace, grace, grace. You are not in competition with anybody. <laughs> you are not in competition. You see some women trying to hire your husband. Then you are going crazy. Then you don't have grace. <laughs> you don't have grace. If you are a graced woman, a, gra a member of Jesus Global Ecclesia Gracious Women Fellowship, you know nobody can compete with you in that marriage. You know God has graced you. No, your husband is secure. You are the custodian of his destiny. Do you understand what grace can do? You don't compete with grace. Example of people with professional and career excellence anointings, Aulia and Basa Hill. And this is, these people operate by excellency of wisdom with anointed innovation. Wisdom say, I find out knowledge out of which invention. You find an example in Exodus 36 from verse 1 to 3, where God said he has given them the spirit of wisdom to design and fashion all the works of the tabernacle. And then we have those who are called into womanhood excellence and every woman is called into this. They are custodians of destinies. They are helpers of destiny. You, are, you find an example of such in, in Sarah, Mother Sarah, hallelujah to Jesus, glory to God forevermore. And of course you have overwhelming example of men that are called into gospel ministry excellence all around you. I don't need to give you example of that. So you must therefore identify your calling, identify the gifts God has given you to fulfill that calling and then your ultimate pursuit on daily basis, as you are saying, 
is you are ascending to find grace to accomplish that which God will tell you to accomplish. It's not about you, it's about God. It's about the purpose of God for you. And so when you are sent to his presence, you want to know, Lord, what next? What would you want us to do? And when he tells you what to do, you find the grace to do it. Whatever your destiny in God is, discover it and fearlessly and wisely pursue it to fruitfulness. Do you understand, child of God? Lekuzi lahanda bakushkele. Zakote preni mokosa balashika. Kasa preni mahando koshika. Let me quickly give you in brief the master key to the enthronement of destiny. We are still going to be discussing this, but I want to share this with you today. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6, I've been trying to tell you what the master key is. Today I will show you, I will introduce you to the spiritual master key. <laughs> are you ready for this child of God? Glory to God. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Liar. Jesus started with prayer, ended with prayer. Are you sure you were there? Prayer is the master key. That is, prayer is not everything. Because I taught you, what you have faith for, you don't pray for. You use prayer to get into faith. Prayer is one of the key of the kingdom. Wisdom is more powerful than prayer. Wisdom is the principal thing. And in the realm of the spirit, in the spiritual realm, there is a key that you can use to unlock any other door that every other key fails to unlock. Are you ready for that key? Yes, sir. Oh, only Emmanuel is, a, is alive today. Who else is there? Are yes, you ready sir. for this key? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory yes, to sir. God. Masike Suprayina Mahandash. Lakuside. So the Bible says God has made us kings and priests unto our God. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Is that correct? And Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. So if we are kings and queens, that means we have kingdoms. Is that correct? That's just logical. If he has made us kings and priests, that means we, we each of us have got kingdoms. And I've taught you how to use your priestly office to achieve your kingly office. You use your priestly office to create spiritual portals and to shut the gates of hell. When Jesus Christ said the gates of hell shall not prevail, it means you as a priest receive understanding to shut down the gates of hell. Like me and my team are beginning to shut down the gates of hell through the entertainment industry. You will hear about us. We're going to have to shut down the gates of hell in the cosmetic industry. We will shut down the gates of hell in the media industry. We will shut down the gates of hell in the fashion industry. We are going to shut down all the gates of hell. And you will be the one God will use. Come and say amen. amen. We're going to shut down the gates of hell in science and technology. La Kosi Kalaba. Hallelujah. So how do you demonstrate your kingly ministry? By identifying your call, recognizing your gifts, mastering the ascension as you have been taught, mastering the protocols in the court of heaven, mastering how to create spiritual portals, and mastering how to shut down the gates of heaven by decree, and your angels will execute it in your kingdom. Each one of us has been given a kingdom a jurisdiction in the colony to enforce the will of God. And you cannot enforce the will of God unless you shut down the gates of hell and cast out the devil there. And I've taught you how to do that. How do you wake up in the morning? Because you're a junior officer in that place, you think those people on top of you are your boss? You are joking because your boss is Jesus. He placed you there. Even if you're a gate man, you have an opportunity to shut the gate of that company against the devil. You are there to enforce the will of God. As you stand by the gate in the morning, you begin to prophesy. You begin to speak to principalities and powers. In the name of Jesus, the will of God shall be done in this company. I open the gate of this company to God's children alone. Everyone on top there that is not of God, I sack you. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. You think you are a gatekeeper, but you are a kingdom enforcer. Do you understand? Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm a man of God. What about me that is a sweeper? As we are sweeping, I sweep the devil out of this place prophetically in the name of Jesus. Every evil is swept out of this place. I create the atmosphere of God in this place. Before you know what is happening, all the management staff will be full of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues to your favor. You don't understand, do you? Moses was given the rod and God told Moses in Exodus chapter 7 verse 1 that this rod have made you a God unto Pharaoh and with this rod, you will do signs. Lekosi anta fradia namasuketia. Also, you find the story in Exodus chapter 4, verse 12 to 18, that God said, I've made you a God unto Pharaoh. What makes you a God? 
you are a king, you decree and it is executed. But the instrument that God gave to Moses, which represents his gift, was the rod. So your gifts are the rod. When you begin to use the gift of sweeping, the gift of gate man, the whatever gift, academic gift, we are going to study gift in this series. Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, say amen. Are you tired? No, sir. Okay, let's do this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 53 verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. I will make and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Without the sure mercies of David released upon your life, upon your gift, upon your calling, I guarantee your frustration. You will be like God is not your father. And you will operate as if you are not called by God to do what you are doing. What did he tell you? Hebrews 4, 16. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace, right? It is a throne of what, everybody? Grace. But what should you do first at the throne of grace? That ye may obtain mercy. <laughs> Without the certificate of mercy, there is no grace. So that tells you, mercy is the most important factor in the realm of the spirit after you have ascended. Because without mercy, you will never find grace. You just went on a tour into heaven. You are coming back useless. Come boldly to the throne of grace that ye may obtain mercy. Mercy must be obtained. And the person that guarantees mercy for you is the high priest Jesus Christ based on the new covenant. Apply the protocol of ascension and protocol in the court of heaven and mercy is guaranteed the way I've taught you. Once you obtain mercy, you are guaranteed grace. Between mercy and grace is a factor that is called favor. But the moment you find mercy, the moment you find you obtain mercy, favor will follow you. Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. Great. Favor is God giving you what you don't deserve. Another definition of favor is called the loving kindness. The kindness that God shows you because he loves you. Mercy said he must not die. Mercy says he's supposed to die but he won't die. So mercy is giving you what you don't deserve. So when all prayer principles fail, Try mercy. When every door is closed, try mercy. Mercy never fails. Did you, did you hear what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. The key of mercy never fails. You are not qualified for it. Mercy will qualify you. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you understand? Yes, man of God. Why you are not forgetting in your ascension, you are ascending with meekness? Because only the meek will he guide in his ways. So how does mercy operate? The moment you obtain mercy, mercy will procure you uncommon opportunities. Uncommon opportunities. I'm going to start from here tomorrow. Mercy, the mercies of God is the key of David. It's called the key of the house of David. That opens and no man shut, and shut and no man opens. Any door you lock with mercy, no devil can open it. Any door you open with mercy, no devil can close it. And therefore, by mercy, I open your womb today. Receive the fruit of the womb. By mercy, I open you to a new chapter of your life. I obtain mercy for you before the throne of grace. Mercy will begin to speak for you. By mercy, every delay of elevation in your life is shut out. By mercy, doors of opportunities are open unto you. By mercy, your prayers are answered. By mercy, in the name of Jesus, every impossible door becomes possible. In the name of Jesus. And every door you want closed, I declare them closed by mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you blessed tonight? Give God praise, give God praise. While you are going home, go home with Isaiah chapter 22 verse 22. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder it will become your badge it will become your badge he will lay it upon your shoulder so that you shall open and none shall shut and you shall shut and none shall open come and say amen. amen from today I deliver this key to you he said I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom Whatsoever he shall bind shall be bound. Whatsoever he shall lose shall be loose. Here is the master key today. You will never be stranded again in life. 
where people thought they have closed the door against you, just smile. Say, I am patched up in the spirit with the key of David. And by divine providence, my pastor is anointed David for my generation. And he represents the Davidic generation with the key of David. La Kodeberi Amahanda. No nation can be close against you. No business can be too hard for you. No finance can be too difficult for you to find. Because of the key of the house of David. I lay that key upon your shoulder today in the mighty name of Jesus. Revelation 3, 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, this thing says, he that is only, he that is true, he that has the key of David. That is what is called the key of knowledge. That is what the key, the key of the bottomless feet, the key of the kingdom. One of the keys is the key of David and it is the key, master key of the kingdom of God. Amen. He that opens and no man shut, shuts and no man opens. God bless. You are blessed. In Jesus' name, I'll see you same time tomorrow. God bless.